feel that cattle farming works for us is the side benefit of what it does for our next generation, the children that are coming along. Because whether they go out and return to the farm or whether they go off to any career in the world, those skills that they learn are going to serve them well. Cattle are a big part of our livelihood. I mean, they literally put the food on the table and the clothes on our back. But I am a realist. We are a realist. I mean, they're not pets. We understand what they're for. And, you know, without the cattle, our farm wouldn't survive. I mean, we couldn't make it without them. Raising cattle is important to my family. I feel like I've got two kids, and being around cattle and being around light livestock in general, they learn the value that life is precious. They learn about hard work. In a world where most kids are texting on their phone or looking at their iPad, it teaches them to get off the couch and go take care of an animal. The reason we got in the cow business is because it accompanies what we do with our row crop operation very well. We're able to use marginal farmland. We're not, we're not making very much money tending it and put cows on it. Land grow grass just fine. We're able to take swine affluent, poultry litter, and fertilize these summer pastures and our winter annuals. And with us having winter annuals on this marginal farmland, we're able to cut down our hay cost almost 100%. The reason that we have cows today is because we built hog houses in 1991. And we had to have a source of getting the, the grass up. And at that time, we didn't have fifty or sixty thousand dollars to go buy hay baling equipment so we bought the four-legged hay baling equipment and we started out with 10 and then we went to 20 and then we went to 30 and we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 25 cows right now we have beef cattle on this farm because there's always been cows of some sort here this is the farm i grew up on so i just felt like my ancestors were thinking that cows needed to be back on here. And we just, I mean, we weren't gonna go in the dairy business. We weren't gonna go back down that road. Cattle fits in our current farming operation right along with all of our row crops and our vegetable crops. The current ag economy we face as an American farmer is extremely difficult with everything that's going on and, and will continue to be, you know, diversification will continue to be very important in, in our future as far as my wife and I, and then also as hopefully our children decide to carry it on as well. So we are a cow-calf operation. Um, our primary business is actually commercial broiler chickens. Um, so the cows are supplemental. Well, it's what we enjoy. Uh, we like having them out on the land here. Uh, it's just a natural part of, of what we do. It's an extension of the hogs. It's an extension of the poultry operation. We get fertilizer from both. And so we have this readily available fertilizer to go onto our grasses and our, our winter crops and our different forages that we have. That's how I look at it, it's just an extension of everything that we do. I got my start in the cattle industry as a young person in 4-H and started out with uh, one orphan calf, um, raised her on a bottle and began my first cattle herd with her. Um, here in Johnson County, um, we have a large portion of the county which is being developed and so I'm very fortunate to have a farm that is uh, tended and lived on by the owner and they like to continue keeping it in agricultural use. Also very important in the community to know your neighbors. And as you can kind of see behind me here, the pasture that this particular pasture borders a subdivision, uh, which provides green space for these individuals who live in the neighborhood. But what it also means is, is that fences need to be mended, uh, cattle need to be kept out of yards, and the other neighbors also need to understand that if they happen to wind up with a loose calf in their yard, uh, that there's not anything wrong with that, and that calf's not gonna hurt them, and they don't need to be upset by that. So those are very important things. Again, community involvement is very important. The Alamance County Cattlemen Association, since I've been involved with them for over 20 years, we've given over 100 scholarships to young people pursuing careers in agriculture. And anyone that just at all thinks about the next generation, that is hugely important. If they're going into a field of agriculture, they need all the help we can give them. And I think the next generation, we should always be looking toward the next generation of cattlemen. I'm sold on the whole process and excited about the future of the regenerative process of building these soils back up. We can be raising cows, we can produce a great product, but be building that soil for the generations to come. We're not regulated to how many animals we can keep in an area. 
Um, however, typically we'll make certain that we're maintaining our pastures in a manner that is uh, re allowing the pastures and the forages to rejuvenate. And you can see the pastures kind of here behind me in regard to how we are managing and rotating um, our cattle to be able to maintain these pastures. My favorite forage is Bermuda grass. When you're out there cutting this hay and baling it, there's nothing no prettier than a pretty crop of Bermuda grass. We also use a bunch of upcycled products in our feed rations. Um, our main stock or feed ration consists of cotton malt, which comes from cotton gins, uh, DDGs, which are a byproduct from ethanol plants and distillery or, or brewery, excuse me. And as well as we use old expired produce and bakery goods from local grocery stores that would ultimately end up in the landfill if there wasn't an alternative source for it. So what I would want to tell consumers is that beef cattle is a great way to take care of our land, uh, to graze the forage that we have, to convert that forage into such a good protein product, and that we care for our cattle. Um, we are really passionate about what we do. We make sure that they're comfortable every day, that they're living a healthy life. Um, and at the end of the day, we know that that is one of the best protein sources that we can have. Contrary to what I think a lot of people think about beef cattle production, most cows live most of their life on a pasture. One thing um, is that beef is sustainable. If you know, we, the country as a whole stops raising beef or stops raising cattle uh, and stops having the grasslands and that kind of stuff, um, then the environmental impacts and you know, 100 years down the road or 200 years down the road is going to be detrimental. You know, and that's what we're trying to think about now is what are we going to be leaving for the future.